The Ugly Duckling, The Little Mermaid, The Princess, and The Pea. Chances are you've listened to or at least have heard of these stories. Hans Christian Andersen is the world renowned author behind many beloved classic fairy tales. Have you ever wondered what Andersen's life was like and what makes his story so endearing and enduring? Hi, my name is Sheena, and today I'll be sharing a little on Hans Christian Andersen's life, works, and his contributions to children's literature. Are you ready? Let's begin. Let's start with his background. Hans Christian Andersen was born on 2nd April 1805 in a city called Odense in Denmark. He was the only child of Hans Andersen and Anne Marie Andersdatter. Andersen's mother, Anne Marie, was a washerwoman who did laundry for the richer folks in town. Anne Marie was illiterate, she had difficulty reading, and she could not even write her own name. Andersen's father, Hans Andersen, was a shoemaker, and he inspired a love for stories in young Andersen. Together, they read everything from Shakespeare to the Arabian Nights. The Arabian Nights inspired Andersen so much that he became a storyteller to pauper women. He would draw on the doors of their spinning rooms using chalk to illustrate the characters from his stories. More often than not, the women were always happy to have him around, and many even praised his eloquence. To pursue his aspirations, young Andersen left Odense when he was merely 14 years old. He traveled to Copenhagen, where he discovered his passion for theater, poetry, and even writing. However, Andersen's road to fame was not an easy one. He was rejected on many occasions when he auditioned to be an actor, dancer, and even singer at the Royal Theatre. Andersen was criticized for being not educated enough, too thin for theater, and even too lanky to dance. On New Year's Day in 1835, when Andersen was 30, he wrote a letter to his friend Henriette Hanch. Andersen said that he was starting on some fairy tales for children and he was going to win over future generations. Well, Andersen turned out to be right. Within three months, he published a book of tales for children. They contained popular stories that we know and love today, like The Princess and the Pea, Tumbelina, The Little Mermaid, and The Emperor's New Clothes. Here's a fun fact, Andersen was also a paper cutting whiz. He made hundreds, if not thousands, of whimsical paper cuttings. He often told a story while he was making one, and he would astonish his listeners by unfolding the paper to reveal a meticulously crafted image. So, what makes Andersen's stories so endearing and enduring? For a start, his stories were written based on personal experiences. Unlike other fairy tale authors such as the Grimm brothers, who mostly wrote or recorded stories passed down by German peasants, Andersen's stories borrowed from his childhood experiences and his relationship with others. Like the ugly duckling, he was born into a poor family and was often outcasted and alone. However, like a swan, he blossomed into a renowned storyteller with more than 150 of his stories read and translated all over the world. Andersen's stories are timeless because they deal with universal themes and the human condition. They are simple enough for children to understand, but not simplistic so as to bore the adults. Take for example, The Little Mermaid. Yes, this is a story about a mermaid who falls in love with a handsome prince. But it is also a devastating tale with metaphors for sacrifice, unspoken love, and temptations from a world unknown. Or we have the Emperor's New Clothes, simply about a foolish king, or the profoundly powerful effect truth-telling can have against societal pressures. What I personally like about Anderson's stories is that they elegantly deal with heavier topics. The original Little Mermaid and Tin Soldier stories do not have happy endings, and yet they are not unpalatable. Instead, these stories inspire a sense of empathy for the characters. For parents, teachers, and educators, Anderson's stories can present a somewhat gentle introduction to more serious themes in the form of accessible stories. Even today, more than a hundred years later, Anderson's stories are still being retold and reimagined. They have been adapted into movies like Disney's Frozen and The Little Mermaid. Now that's a testament to the endurance of his charming tales. In addition to movies, there are also many literary adaptations of Anderson's works. Here's one of my favorite stories. This story tells of Emperor Mingda, only nine years old when he ascends the throne, and how he teams up with his tailors to trick his three greedy advisors for the good of the people. 
You can borrow this book at our public libraries and do check out the beautiful illustrations. Modern adaptations and parallel stories give us the wonderful opportunity to discover familiar stories anew. Set in a different context or told with a twist, our classic fairy tales can become entirely novel. Haha, -ha, get it? Novel? I suspect fairy tales will continue to live on in the popular imagination. Maybe long, long ago in a land far, far away. Isn't that long ago or far away after all? I hope you've enjoyed learning more about Hans Christian Andersen. Do visit our public libraries to find out more about him and read his wonderful fairy tales. You can even borrow some of these books on the Libby app. For more content on Hans Christian Andersen, do scan this QR code or you can visit the link here. I'll see you next time. Bye!